We are less than 24 hours away from that total solar eclipse here in central Ohio and Ahead of time, if you're interested in finding out what portions of the country will see what percentage of that total solar eclipse, NASA has this handy dandy eclipse explorer map up right now and it shows you all of that information you might be looking for. So for example, here in central Ohio, we will start to see just the beginnings of that start right around two o'clock when you'll just start to see a tiny sliver of the moon start to slip in front of the sun. Yeah, and from there it's going to get more and more impressive. Of course, when we start to see the moon uh, come in front of the sun, the greatest eclipse still out in the Pacific Ocean. But as we travel through time here, it moves pretty fast. Getting toward about two o'clock, we get into Texas here about 2:30. It's moving through Kerrville. We continue on from there as we work our way toward about three o'clock. We get to an interesting point here in the country where the eclipse greatest path is in southern portions of Missouri and into Kentucky. And this is an interesting spot because we. Go back to 2017 and that's where we actually have a double uh, eclipse. The totality is going to go through there uh, two times in just a few years. And Colin, you were out there in 2017 for that last one, right? I was in Southern Illinois in 2017 and I can say if you're in that full path of totality in a clear area, it is one of the most incredible experiences you'll see when that when the moon finally fully slips in front of the sun and you get that halo effect. It is beautiful. You yeah. just dive into complete darkness. Now, also, it is important to note some of the messaging that we've had um, about traffic after the event um, and other things like that. That came from experiences from that and all the cities that experienced it passing along that knowledge as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was down in Western Kentucky for the 2017 event and there's some choke points in here. If you get down into places like Evansville crossing over the river there, there's not a lot of uh, volume for yeah. large traffic and we're going to get a lot of people crammed in these areas and it's because everybody yeah. tries to leave at once. Absolutely. They even ran out of gas down there. I had to buy premium gas because <laughs> there was no more just regular unleaded. It yeah, was crazy an event. Um, but from there, of course, we head into Ohio in short order. We move the greatest eclipse on from our point here, went a little bit too far. We'll back it up to about 315 or so, which is when we start to see that eclipse come through central Ohio. By that point, we're starting to get the greatest eclipse uh, in and around the 10 TV viewing area. But it's important to note, it does not include the metro of Columbus. So we are going to just barely miss out on the edge here. Slip right by it. Yeah. But if you're in Delaware, parts of Dublin, you will in fact see that. And especially yeah. up towards Marion, Canton, Bell Fountain have some pretty decent viewing spots. Absolutely. Lots of great viewing here across central Ohio. If you can get into that path of totality and you may remember earlier this week, we talked about that path kind of shifting a little bit. It's those fringe areas. Those are the only ones that are going to see that potential impact. So, you know, if you're on the edge, just drive a little bit further. Yeah.